What is up, humans? Um, super proud of you guys. I'm sending you guys this, guys this video because I'm just trying to help you guys kind of get ready for the competition. So if you're seeing this video, it is because you have decided to sign up for it. And again, we're all super proud of you. We cannot wait to be there supporting you guys. Uh, I hate to say judging because some of us will be your judges, that kind of thing. But just being there to support you and watch you guys go through an experience that most of you guys have not done before. Um, so super proud of you, okay? Um, I'm gonna go through a couple things in terms of like your mindset, uh, what to do before workout, and then um, some other things, workouts and kind of like how I would approach it, that kind of thing as well, okay? So your mindset going into it, you guys can have different mindsets going into this. You guys can have a mindset that you are going to win and you're gonna do everything in your power to win. Or you guys can go into it just saying like, I'm going to be do the best that I can, not really knowing going into it, all right? So um, my goal for you would be just like to go in there, give it your all and be proud of yourself because more than anything, you guys are already winning because you're putting yourself in, for most of you guys, a uncomfortable situation and you're getting out of your comfort zone. So it's a win just in it of itself that you guys are voluntarily getting outside of your comfort zone because with discomfort comes growth and it will just make you a better person. Okay. So think about that as you guys kind of get ready for it, that humble yourself, don't be nervous. It's an hour of your life. Um, and it's not going to be any worse than anything that you've done in the gym. And you know, I'm sure you've done way harder things in life. Um, so this is just you pushing your physical capacity for an hour. Okay. Um, so it's going to be challenging. It's going to be something that again, you're going to be nervous. You're going to be anxious, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to try to give you some tips to try to alleviate some of that as much as possible. And some of that, I'll kind of try to give you some tips on the workouts and so on and so forth. All right. So um, that's your mindset. Like, so going into it, like, just know, like, all right, cool. It's going to be hard. It's not nearly going to be as hard as you think it's going to be. And that uh, you can do this because you signed up for it. And it means you're capable and you have enough confidence to sign up. So you'll be fine. Okay. But have fun with it because more than anything, that's what it's about is having fun and getting people together and challenging yourselves and each other. Okay. So what to do prior to Saturday? Um, obviously it is Wednesday today. Um, I would say potentially do not work out tomorrow and definitely do not work out on Friday. All right. So tomorrow is the Hugh three K. So, you know, it's a little, you're not necessarily going to be terribly sore from it. Um, so I would say potentially work out tomorrow. If not, do not, you know, you, you are definitely not working out Friday. Um, and then tomorrow, depending on how you take care of your body and stuff like that, and your recovery is, then maybe work out tomorrow. Um, just don't be a hundred percent in terms of like, go, go, go. I got to win. Just like come in and get a good workout and open everything up. Okay. So biggest thing over the course of the next two days, so Thursday, Friday is just to kind of, um, take care of your body. So the biggest thing that we always encourage people is to try to keep in your routine, so if you normally go work out at 5.30 in the morning, maybe come in and do some stretching and mobility and some little stuff like that um, so that you're managing your team. The biggest thing that everybody asks us is like, what should I eat or what should I not eat? And yada, 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 should I carb load? Um, my biggest recommendation is, is keep your routine. So the, bit, the last thing that you wanna do is eat something out of the norm, you know, maybe carb loading and then feeling full and bloated or whatever it is, maybe the day after, um, stay as normalized as possible um, and less normal is drinking every night. So then don't normally drink before the workout. Okay. So I would say from a diet standpoint, as long as your typical da daily diet doesn't have wine and or alcohol in it, then do exactly the same thing so that you know that your body's going to react properly. Okay. Um, you can eat all the carbs after the workout. You don't necessarily have to do them beforehand, but um, normal meals up until your heat time, whatever it is. I would say if you have a 10 a.m. or an 11 a.m. heat time, I would be there probably 45 minutes beforehand, maybe an hour if you don't like to be late to anything. But your basic goal is that you're going to have 30 to 45 minutes, I'd say 10 to 15 minutes to get settled, figure out where the warm up area is, kind of like, you know, other people are going to be warming up. So you want to kind of give yourself some time like, all right, I want to go warm up a couple lifts, you know, that kind of thing. And um, so maybe 30 to 45, maybe 45 minutes to an hour ahead of your heat time is when you guys want to get to the actual Hugh Delray so that you guys can get checked in, get your t-shirt and kind of just get comfortable. You know, the last thing that you want to do is feel rushed going into it and your heart rate's already going just because you were late. Okay. Um, so that's what I would say is pre-wadden in terms of your diet, try to maintain your normal routine, 
And then the morning of, I would just eat like a good solid healthy breakfast. But if you normally eat at nine and your heat time's at 10, don't eat at nine, eat a little bit earlier, that kind of thing. Um, and then while you're working out, I would recommend having some sort of either intra workout or amino acids because through one workout, your blood sugar might drop a little bit. And then you wanna be able to just drink that uh, just to help it come back up just a little bit. So again, intra, which is the supplements that we sell or some sort of amino acid and so that you guys have, make sure it has glucose in it. So some of that stuff will help you recover a little bit faster in between walks, okay? But don't chug it because then the next walk you're gonna do a burpee or something and you're gonna feel like crap. So um, again, if you have never done any of that stuff, I would say take it on the light end because you don't want that to be the first time you take um, either pre-workout or intra or in one of those things and then you feel like crap in the middle of your workout okay so again primarily stick to routine but uh if i was going to do it i would probably not take pre-workout because i typically don't but i may have like intra and just take a couple sips in between workouts if anything at all okay um when you get there you guys are going to you'll probably have to check in obviously get a t-shirt so on and so forth they want to make sure that you are there you're going to go and you're going to warm up so there's going to be a warm-up area uh, it's going to be kind of a free for all. So you just kind of, you know, naturally find your little spot, do some stretches, grab a PVC pipe, all that kind of thing, get yourself ready. Um, and then once it's like your heat time, you're basically going to get assigned a lane and then you're going to be in that lane. The biggest thing that I can recommend going into your workouts is judges are there as volunteers and they are not there to try to like force you to fail. They are there to try to make you have a good time, encourage you and make sure that it's fair across the board, okay? So I've been in competitions where people get very pissed off at judges because they think that it's not fair. And I'll tell you out of the gate, judging's not easy and they're doing the best that they can just as much as you're doing the best that you can. Most times where a judge has no rep somebody or done anything that like has created any controversy, it's because the athlete was trying to skimp and got called out for it. So uh, don't try to cut corners, just do everything as natural and as full range of motion as you see fit. And you'll never get called out for no repping anything. Okay, so that would be the biggest thing is don't get mad at the judges, they're there for you and they're trying to help you. And the last thing that you wanna do is piss them off and then make it like to where they're, you know, there's you're not working together, you're working against each other. Um, if you have any questions about the range of motion, the standards, any of that kind of stuff, you're gonna have two or three minutes typically with the judge prior to your workout. So once you get to your next station or once you get to the original workout, if you have any questions or any things that you like have a little bit of a mobility issue or there's anything like that, then I would prior to the workout starting, say, hey, this is what I'm going to do for this movement. Is this a good rep? And demonstrate it for them and then let them give you the feedback on whether or not they're gonna count it or not. Most of it's pretty, pretty standard. But again, uh, instead of going into it like, oh, I'm going to try to, you know, just break parallel on every wall ball and I'm just going to barely get to, you know, my eyes on this movement. Know that if, if you're skimping everything, you might get called out. So don't get mad at the judge. Just know that you didn't do as much as you could have typically as an athlete. And again, that's just looking at, I'm not saying that there's not bad judges. I'm just saying that I've been around enough competitions to know that typically it's not the judge's fault. Um, they're doing their best. It was the athlete trying to short themselves or short the rep, whatever it might be. Okay, so um, remember that your judge is your friend. They're there for you. They're there to support you. So um, be good to them as well. All right. So that's kind of all of my tips, tricks, advice going in leading up until like three, two, one, go. I'm going to go like workout by workout and just kind of show you guys how I interpret the workout. What I would say is going to be a strategy. If you've done all the workouts before, then by all means, you can turn off the camera right now and do your own thing. But this is just something I wanted to go through because I know we didn't get an opportunity. At least I wasn't present on the Friday night things uh, that he did. Okay. So workout number one, this is one of those ones where uh, I would say your breathing and your mindset is going to be the biggest thing going into this workout. What I mean by that is don't let the nerves and the anxiety of everything uh, workout one overwhelm you so that you, you know, you do worse in this workout. So um, if you guys have done this workout before, you kind of know how many rounds you're expecting to get, but one person works at a time, relay style, they have to do the entire round. Um, I would say the biggest thing with this one is again, focus on your breathing and not trying to kill yourself uh, out of the gate because it's one of those things that probably for most of us 
the wall balls are going to get a little bit taxing. Um, and then depending on your division, then I would say that's probably the most taxing thing is going to be your wall balls, no matter what. Okay. So biggest thing, use your legs, make sure you guys jump, build momentum. When we talk about picking a word on the wall ball line here in the gym, and you guys completely ignore us and disregard that, this is where that will save your life because you're only going to have a target that's about eight inches around. And the more precise and the more accurate you can be, the less that you will um, either hit failure or have it come off sideways or get a no rep or whatever it might be. So uh, precision on wall balls is gonna be your biggest thing. And then my tip for alternating dumbbell snatches would be alternating at the top if you can, because if you set it down and then have to re-grab it, it's just gonna take you a little bit longer. So that would be something you could potentially practice in the gym prior to going there, okay? So that is wad number one. Wad number two is a max lift. Only one person gets to do a max cluster and then one person gets to do a max power clean. With this one, I would say anywhere from three to five lifts is going to be ideal. So to work backwards on the math, let's say that I can do, I've done 150 pounds once. I know that I can do 135. So 145, you know, that kind of thing. So you want to choose like the, I know I can wait and then maybe go one or two, maybe like one weight below that. So um, for me personally, and like, I'll just talk, um, you know, cleaning jerks and stuff like that for me. I know pretty soundly I can do 275 for a cleaning jerk. Um, so I would probably start at like 235, 255 and then do a big jump up into what I know I could do. And then that would be my second lift. And then I'm gonna have like my hope I can get it done. And then my, you know, prayers that I can get this one done if I got the last one done. So I would probably plan three to five lifts, but you don't wanna go like, I can do a hundred pounds. I'm gonna start at 50 and then do 60 and then do 70 and then do 80 and then do 90 and then do a hundred and then be running out of time because you did so many small increments, okay? so. I know most of you guys have practiced this already, but have like your, I know I can do this lift, maybe do one or two lifts before that, hit that one, and then give yourself one, maybe two lifts after that. Um, Cause everybody reacts differently to general adrenaline and crowds and all that kind of stuff. So you don't want to hit failure early because then that's a lot more defeating, but you also don't want to not get to where, you know, your greatest potential is because, you know, you went too light in the beginning. So hopefully you guys practice that one. Um, and you guys have an idea of what you want to hit. And then you should have a weight of like, all right, this is going to be like, fingers crossed. This is what I'm hoping to hit. Um, wad number three, I'm assuming you guys probably either practice it or you have a set uh, rep count that you guys are going to do. What I mean by that is you're like, all right, I'm going to do 10 deadlifts and you did do 10 then, and then I do 10 and then you do five and then I start on the burpees or whatever it might be. This is one of those workouts where a lot of times what you plan um, doesn't happen because somebody's going to get punched in the mouth. What I mean by that, a lot of times when there's like big chippers and all that kind of stuff, we're trying to do like 50-50 and either one of us is much better at one of the movements or one of us just craps out for whatever reason. Um, what happens is a lot of times it's like, all right, I'm going to do 20 over the bar burpees and then you do 15. Well, the 20 over the bar burpees might completely tax somebody. And then the next time that you get to your deadlifts and that guy's supposed to be going, he's completely taxed, he or she, whatever it might be. So this is one of those ones, have a plan and know that you might get punched in the mouth and your plan's gonna have to change. So just be aware of that. Uh, I've seen that a lot of workouts where they literally like all things just go out the window and it's a free for all and people will go slower because they're like, well, he's got two more reps he's gotta do or whatever it is. So um, just know that this is one of those workouts where it probably will um catch up on you on one way shape or form to where it's going to catch you off guard and don't hesitate to change the plan in the middle of the workout to try to keep going um as efficiently as possible and then the reverse lead pull and kettlebell carry i don't think there's a whole too much um you know stuff that's going to go wrong with this one this is going to be one of those ones that like the sled's going to i don't want to say make or break you but being efficient on how you guys get the kettlebells up meaning that you guys do it through the hips, you know, thumbs up the butt, then that will help you out drastically. So making sure that you guys know how to get the kettlebells in that front rack position quickly so that you have fast transitions and you're not failing trying to get it up to your shoulders. Okay, um, that is kind of it in a nutshell. Uh, I hope that helps you guys and I hope that you guys just look forward to it. You guys are gonna do an amazing, amazing job. If you have any questions, please, 
do not ha uh, hesitate to reach out to any of us. Um, all four of us in terms, I think Garrett's done them. So most of your, um, most of your coaches have done com competitions before. So if you need any insight or just want some advice and some positive feedback, let us know. Um, like I said, we're always here for you. This is just try to go broad base and help everybody. But if you have anything in particular, please let us know and then we'll do our best to try to help out. So um, proud of you guys already again, just for signing up and we will see you on Saturday.